In today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at these four brand new perfume parlor creations that only became available to actually order just a few days ago. So even the ink on the labels has barely had time to dry. I usually uh, leave my orders to macerate before I review them for a few a few weeks, but these uh, these are too exciting not to share with you instantly. I've also got a, a couple of really fabulous extract sprays to go through with you that I think are top notch. So to find out what's made it into this latest haul, stay tuned to this episode of Mags Frags. <laughs> Yes, hello again everybody and thank you very much once again for tuning in to this latest episode of Mags Frags. My name's Paul and this is the 16th Perfume Parlour haul review of this particular series and today is definitely going to be a good one because I've managed to get my hands on a couple of absolute bangers uh, which I'm going to share with you uh, very shortly. And I've actually never seen a couple of these uh, being copied by any of the other clone houses out there so you'll need to be quick if you want to get your hands on a couple of these because uh, I can't see them being in stock for that long. But before I begin today's rundown, if you are interested in uh, picking up any of these bottles that feature in today's video to try out for yourself, then you can use my unique discount code to get yourself 10% off your first order, uh, which I'll leave uh, a direct link to down in the description. The link will direct you to uh, a login page and you'll be asked to create a login name and a password and set up an account. Uh, but once you have set your account up and you've logged in and made your purchases, your discount will automatically be applied down in the, in the checkout. And as always guys, just a quick disclaimer like I say at the beginning of every one of these videos, I don't work for the perfume parlour and this video is in no way sponsored by them in any way. So all these opinions that you're about to hear today are my own opinions and I did buy these bottles with my own money. I do however receive a small commission for recommending you to their website. So just by clicking on the link in the description you'll save uh, your 10% whilst supporting the channel and helping me to bring you some more free content in the future. Okay, so the first one in today's haul is called Envoy and the perfume parlor code on this one is 0623. This is a copy of Ambassador from Swedish brand Gizada and I actually did a, a full review of the original in my uh, 365 project and since then many of you have been asking the guys over at the perfume parlor via their Facebook page to produce a copy of it and they've seemed to have taken it on board and uh, listened to your requests and come up with the goods so I'm taking a little bit of credit for uh, reviewing this one. Uh, the top notes in this are violet, green mandarin, cardamom and apple in the mid there's peony, patchouli, lavender, black pepper and mango and the base notes in this one are moss, teak, amber, vetiver and vanilla. Yeah, so the original of this was one of the highlights of last year for me when I first got my nose on it. It's a fabulous smelling fragrance with a stunningly fruity opening with mango and mandarin orange taking centre stage. But there's also a really classy masculinity to it in the background and that's going to definitely kind of remind you of uh, Dior Sauvage. It's going to give you that uh, Sauvage kind of vibe. Uh, but to my nose, I think this is actually better than Sauvage and the mango is ridiculously addictive. It's super versatile and you can wear it all year round, day or night, uh, dressed up or casual. It's very long lasting and despite some people saying that it doesn't project very well, I have to disagree because many people have noticed uh, the original on me when I've, whenever I've worn it uh, and they've always complimented it so I don't really agree with that one. Uh, but unfortunately I can't give you anything more than a first impression of this perfume parlour copy though because uh, I only received it this morning and it hasn't had any time to macerate. This is just about making you aware that it's now available to buy so you uh, don't miss out on it. And as I expected, it's perhaps not as smoothly blended as the original and you do get like more perfume as alcohol from the initial spray. Uh, but when it settles down, it does capture the character of uh, the original Ambassador really well. And you get that lovely sweet fruitiness comes, uh, come through uh, with also a really mass appealing sexy background layer. This is a must in your uh, next perfume parlor order. So what are you waiting for? Get it in your basket. You are going to absolutely love this one. Okay, so if the first one got you all excited, then it's now time to tip you right over the edge because the Perfume Parlour have now finally created one of the most anticipated copy fragrances of the past couple of years. This is called Money Flow and the Perfume Parlour code on this one is 0437. 
This is a copy of the amazing Moola Moola from Byron Parfums. And nearly every time I used to log into the Perfume Parlor Facebook group, somebody would be asking uh, the guys over at the Perfume Parlor if they could uh, create a copy of this particular scent. The top notes in this are raspberry, strawberry, peach and caramel. In the mid we've got labdanum, pink pepper and ginger. And the base notes in this are patchouli, agar wood, musk and vanilla. Yes, yeah, so it's no surprise from that note breakdown that this opens up fairly sweet, uh, but also fairly fruity. And some people say it does lean a bit too feminine, uh, but I don't get that. And I think men could quite easily pull this one off without any problem. But I would say yes, definitely hide it from your wives and girlfriends because they will definitely try to steal it once they've got their nose on this one. It has a bit of a burnt sugary caramel accord as it dries down. And there's also a hint of spice from the ginger and the pink pepper. There's also some darker resinous base notes like patchouli, agar wood and benzoin, uh, but it never gets to the stage where it becomes earthy or woody like you'd expect from uh, the oud and the patchouli notes. This is a lovely gourmand fragrance that I would say is best suited to the cooler weather conditions because it's perhaps a little bit sweet to wear in the high heat of summer, so maybe not the uh, first one that I'd be throwing in my holiday suitcase. This has a casual, playful youthfulness about it, so it's more of an everyday scent in my opinion. Uh, but you could also wear it as like a date night scent because it does have a cosy feel to it. The original has great performance and has a really solid projection, but again, I can't give you uh, a genuine reaction to this Perfume Parlor version until I've given it a, a few full wearings. Uh, but after giving myself uh, just a single spray of it this morning on the back of my hand, I can confirm that it smells very similar to the original and one that is an absolute must try fragrance if you've never got your nose on it. This will probably be like the Perfume Parlor's interpretation of the Chronic, which is also um, a Byron Parfums copy in, in terms of like how quickly it sells out. So again, you will need to be fairly quick out of the blocks if you uh, want to get your nose on this one. Okay, so the third one on the list is yet again another absolute banger. And this, uh, the original one of this one was discontinued years ago, so the chances of finding an original bottle now are slim to none. Uh, this goes by the name of Prompt Intense for Men, and the perfume parlor code on this one is 0043. This is a copy of L'Instant de Galan Au Extreme, or Lidge for us English people for short. And this uh, one comes in the bottle with the black base rather than the uh, totally clear glass bottle if you're not familiar with the original. The top notes in this are Alime, Citruses and Star Anise. In the mid we've got Neroli, Jasmine and Tea. And the base notes in this one are Hibiscus, Virginia Cedar, Sandalwood, Patchouli and Cacao. This is another beautiful gourmand fragrance uh, with lots going on, but the main vibe that most people are gonna get from this one is like a, a dark velvety chocolate with a, a hint of orange and a smooth powdery texture. There's some white florals in the heart and also a tea note, um, but to my nose, it's the cacao and the citruses that stand out the most in this one. There's some smooth milky sandalwood in the base and overall this is a very smooth, warm and comforting fragrance uh, with like a, a really relaxed and a, an ele elegant scent character. It's not a huge projector uh, but it does stick around on skin for quite a few hours before I stop detecting it. Again this is a, a really good fragrance to wear for like a relaxed date night or you could even uh, get away with wearing this one on a cooler day as a, a work or office scent. It is quite sweet, but it never gets too sickly or cloying like you uh, get with Mancera's Chocolate Greedy, which this one sometimes gets compared to, but I think they're both quite a bit different, and this is actually a lot less chocolatey and a bit more complex than the Mancera. This is a, an addictive fragrance that makes you want to keep going in for another sniff and another sniff time and time again. And it smells dark, warm and luxurious and really expensive. So I definitely recommend that you uh, pull the trigger on this one on your next Perfume Parlor shopping trip. Okay, so the last one of the brand new creations is called Italian Noir. And the Perfume Parlor code on this particular one is 0057. This is a copy of Prada Luna Rossa Black, which is an ambery woody fragrance that was launched in 2018. The top notes in this are bergamot, in the mid we've got patchouli and angelica, and the base notes in this are musk, amber and coumarin. 
Yeah, so this one is a fairly dark, musky and resinous scent for the winter time uh, that I think smells more like a niche fragrance than it does a designer. It's not dark in the sense that it's too heavy, heavily sweet or too dense, uh, but it just produces like a nighttime feel with uh, an ambery booziness with uh, some of the famous Prada powdery texture in there also, and some uh, smooth and creamy vanilla right in the far dry down. It's a fairly unique smelling scent and it's one of those fragrances that uh, different people are just going to get a totally different and unique experience from. Some people say that they get a really soft and daytime feel from it and others have said that they get like a burning rubber resinous accord. I get a, a musky amber, a, like a musky ambery fragrance that has a nice mixture of soft powderiness with some masculine accents in the base so I'm kind of sitting on the fence right in the middle ground with that one. I believe the original has now been discontinued, although I could be wrong on that one, uh, but I paid £8.75 for this 30ml bottle size uh, from the Perfume Palace, so for that price it's definitely worth picking up and placing in your autumn and winter collection. Right, so the fifth one in today's haul is called Freezing Only for Men, and the Perfume Parlour code on this one is 0575. This is a copy of Fahrenheit 32 from Dior and it's definitely one that Dior discontinued a while back so if you want to pick up a bottle of the original from an eBay seller it is going to set you back around £200 for a 50ml bottle size. I paid £17 for this 30ml extract spray. Uh, the top note in this one is orange blossom, in the mid we've got vetiver and the base note in this is vanilla so just a simple three note breakdown in this one. So I'll start by saying that Fahrenheit 32, when it was uh, first around, was nothing whatsoever like the OG Dior Fahrenheit with that famous dirty petrol-like uh, aroma. And it was more of a delicate springtime fragrance with a soft, clean freshness rather than the resinous, ultra-masculine type fragrance that you'd expect from a scent carrying that uh, Fahrenheit name. I did own a, a bottle of Fahrenheit 32 a few years ago, but I now have absolutely no idea what happened to it. Uh, I didn't use it up and I didn't sell it or give it away, uh, but it's no longer in my collection, so I must have just probably left it behind uh, if I've taken it out with me somewhere, like in my gym bag or something like that. Um, but unfortunately, I can't compare the original side by side with this Perfume Parlor version. Uh, but I have got to say that this one, uh, when it settles down, really does remind me of how the original Fahrenheit 32 used to smell. However, um, as is the case with most of the fragrances from the Perfume Parlour, I would highly recommend that you don't just go, go in for a, a close sniff straight away after you've first sprayed it. Otherwise you'll get like a nose full of perfumer's alcohol and you'll smell nothing. You must spray it on and just leave it for about 10 or 15 minutes until you start to naturally catch wafts of it in the air. That's the way to enjoy perfume parlor scents rather than uh, getting up close and personal to them. But I guarantee that most people will do what they always do when they go into like a shop and spray it on and straight away going for a, a close sniff. But if you do that, these will just ruin your experience, uh, especially with ones like this one where the fragrance is uh, more on the lighter side. This is a very simple, easy to wear fragrance that's likeable and inoffensive, but it's not going to blow you away with its uniqueness or complexity. You get plenty of clean soapy freshness from the orange blossom up top, uh, there's lots of creamy vanilla in the base and the dry grassy vetiver just balances out the sweetness and kind of stops it from becoming overly feminine. I really enjoy how this one smells, uh, but some guys out there may find it a touch feminine for their own personal taste. But I'd still say it's a great one to try out, just to even uh, form your own opinion on it. And finally, the last one in today's haul is called Blue Card, and the perfume parlour code on this one is 0745. This is one that I actually picked up a couple of weeks ago, but I thought I'd share it with you now because I'm super impressed with how this one smells. It's one of the Bifusion fragrance uh, creations from the Perfume Parlour, where they fuse uh, two well-known fragrances together. And in this case, it's a blend of Creed's Virgin Island Water and Baccarat Rouge 540. I also own the other Baccarat Rouge versions from the Perfume Parlour, including uh, Card Red, um, Card Red X, and uh, also Card Red Surplus. And if I was going to recommend any of these three as just like a straight Baccarat Rouge copy, I'd say definitely go for the Card Red Surplus, which is a clone of the uh, X-Trader Parfum version, and it's very potent with great performance. 
However, I prefer how uh, this blue card smells over any of these other three and it's because of that tropical fruit and the coconut found in Virgin Island water and it's so prominent right from the first spray in this one. There is a Baccarat Rouge DNA present in the background but the saffron from the Baccarat Rouge isn't as potent which I personally prefer. This is no longer my bottle because as soon as one of my family members smelled it she absolutely fell in love with it and basically stole it from me so I'll have to get another one. Uh, but it really is a, a great smelling scent that you could wear all year round uh, but it's absolutely, it absolutely comes to life on a, like a warm summer evening. If you haven't tried this one yet, I definitely urge you to uh, give it a go. Even if you're not a big fan of Baccarat Rouge in general, I'd still say try this one because it, it really is so likeable. It's, uh, it's a great fragrance. Yeah, so in summary, all of these are well worth picking up, but I'd be quick if you're planning on picking up the uh, Moola Moola or the Ambassador copies because I don't think they're going to be hanging around for long and it'll prob they'll probably go out of stock fairly quickly. The blue card uh, is one that I'd highly recommend uh, the other three are all great fragrances uh, but maybe not quite as impressive as the, uh, the first three that I've just mentioned. Yeah, so once again, that's about it for this latest Perfume Parlor haul review. Uh, but don't forget, I've got loads of others to talk about, so I'll be kickstarting my weekly feature from today until I've caught back up again. So look out for lots of lots more Perfume Parlor content coming your way very soon. And as always, guys, if you have found this video useful, uh, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to the channel. I am going to be doing lots of uh, perfume parlor giveaways in uh, future videos uh, but I will only send them out if you subscribe to the channel so hit that red button. It's also uh, great to hear your opinions, your thoughts and uh, your critiques and all other fragrances that feature in these perfume parlor haul videos so keep your comments coming down in the comments section and if you've got any uh, perfume parlor recommendations that you'd like me to feature in future hauls then please uh, let me know down in the comments. So once again, thank you very much uh, once again for tuning into this episode. Stay safe, keep smelling fresh, and I'll see you very soon for another one. Bye-bye for now.